Hello everyone and welcome to Acrylic Code. Today we're back with a new short and introductory tutorial on transitions with GLSL on Touch Designer. Before we move on, please like and subscribe and consider donating to our PayPal to support us into making more videos like this. If you like these tutorials and want to see more, have a look at our other videos in our channel. We have a lot of step-by-step -step tutorials in there and if you're a beginner or just looking to refresh your touch designer knowledge with some practical assignments, have a look at our absolute beginner video with explanations, examples and assignments. Now back to today's tutorial. So in here I have two movie file in tops with our two animations from the previous two tutorials. I will leave the link in the description in case you are interested. Now what we also have here is a crosstop. This helps us create this smooth transition between images or animations. Now let's say for creative purposes you would like to have a more complex transition between your images. For this we're going to introduce transitions in GLSL. Before we move on let's have a little context if you're unfamiliar with GLSL. Back in 1992 OpenGL was released, which is a cross-language, cross-platform application programming interface for rendering complex 2D and 3D vector graphics. Before this, software developers wrote custom interfaces and drivers for each piece of hardware. And then, over 10 years later, GLSL was introduced as an extension of OpenGL. GLSL is an imperative programming language which helps give developers more direct control of the graphics pipeline without having to use hardware-specific languages. This was just a little introduction. If you want to dive in deeper into OpenGL and GLSL, I'll leave the links for the websites in the description box as well as some links for introductory YouTube tutorials that I found helpful. But for this tutorial, we're going to base the transitions on this website for the GL transitions. Let's go to the gallery here and we see that there are pages of numerous transitions you can choose from. For today, we'll see two of them. Let's go to this one first. Here we see the code and we want to implement this code in Touch Designer. First, let's go back to our project and here we're going to delete the crosstop. Right click on the connecting line and we're going to create a GLSL multi. The GLSL multi is a top. It renders a GLSL shader into a top image and like the name suggests, it allows for more than three inputs. Here we need to connect both our animations to its input. Then let's split this right screen and set the second one to Textport and Dots. Let's drag and drop the pixel node from here into our Textport and select Open Dot. Great, now we have our GLSL code in the Textport. Let's get rid of these two comments on the top and in here we have the basic functions. Now let's go back to the Transitions website and for what we're going to do it's not really important to understand the logic of the code but we need to understand the dependencies. So we see here in the top we have a uniform amplitude and a uniform speed. These are exogenous variables, meaning we pass these variables from the outside into our GLSL code. Then on line 11 we have this getFromColor, which is a function that gets a UV parameter and returns a vector 4. Or in other words, the function receives the position of a pixel and it returns the color of that given pixel. In an analog way, we have a get to color, which is a function that does the exact same thing. We'll see in a minute how both these functions will come into play. Here we also have the progress, which as we see is also a uniform parameter given by the website. So we have up to now three uniforms and two functions. In order to get all of these into Touch Designer, we just need to copy the code and paste it onto the text port in our project. Now this is just a convention and not necessary, but I'm going to remove the parameters from here and paste them right on the top of our code. I'll also remove everything after the semicolon since they're just comments and are not actually doing anything. And in here I'm also going to add the third uniform we mentioned before, which was the progress. Great, now for our next step, we need to let Touch Designer know what these variables are. So for this, let's click on the GLSL multi. It's looking like this now, but don't worry, we'll fix this later. Now in the parameter window, go to the vectors tab and in here we'll pass the uniform parameters one by one. So first the amplitude with a default value of 30, which is what we had before. Then with a plus here, we get a new space and repeat the same process with the speed and the progress, where the 
speed has a default value of 30 also and the progress has to have a value between 0 and 1. So I'm just going to go with 0 0.5 for now. Now that we took care of the uniforms, we need to implement these two functions. This is going to be easy because Touch Designer already gave us functions for this. So I'll type in back 4, get from color, and then back 2 and UV. And this will be the UV coordinate. And then I will return the function from down here. This is a function that Touch Designer provides for us to get the color of a pixel in a given coordinate. So for this, I'll replace this last term with the UV like we said before. Now for the second function, I will just copy both these lines and call this second function get to color with a one here instead of a zero. Now what will happen is in here we have the get from color function, which gives us the pixel color on a given coordinate in the first animation. And then we have the second function giving us a pixel color on a given coordinate in the second animation. And then this transition here will handle some logic to transition these pixels into these pixels. Now if we click out, we don't have any errors in our code. Nevertheless, we only have a white screen. And the reason for this is that the main function down here is the only function that is being output into the screen. And in the main function, this line right here is outputting a white pixel. So let's replace the right side here with our transition. And as a parameter, we're going to pass the UV coordinate. Now if we click out, then we get this animation. We notice now that it is constantly in a blending state and this is because the value of the progress is set to 0.5. If I go higher towards 1, then we only see the second animation and if I go lower towards 0, then we only see the first animation. And like so, we have our transition implemented. What we could do is now animate with an LFO. In the parameter window, we set the frequency to 0.01 and then drag and drop the LFO to the value of the progress parameter. So there we go, we have our animation. What we needed to do was establish the uniforms that were needed, implement these two functions and give the coordinates to the transition in the main function. Now let's go back to the website and choose another example. For all the other transitions in here, we need to know which uniforms are being passed and which functions are dependent. The get from colors and the get to colors are the dependencies. And since we already wrote them for the initial transition, we don't need to do it again. So we now only need to check the uniforms. If the uniforms in a new transition are also the same as the uniforms in the transition we just saw, then we only need to copy the code. So let's see, for example, the glitch memories transition. Here we see another example where there are no uniforms being declared at all. So we can actually just copy the code and then go back to the touch designer project, paste the code above the main function and rename the new function to transition glitch. And accordingly, in the main function, replace transition through transition glitch. Now I'm just going to go back to the parameter window of the LFO and I'm going to change the type here to Gaussian. And like so, we'll be able to see the transition happening. It's now only happening slowly since the frequency is low, but if I increase the frequency to 0.1, then we can see the transition happening. So we have now both transitions in the text port. We could add more transitions and to switch effects, we only need to change the name of the transition in the main function. And that was it. We saw two basic examples of the transitions. I hope you enjoyed watching and learned something useful. You can use this on your own touch designer project and get creative with all the other transitions that are available. Otherwise, if you have any questions or suggestions, leave them below and I'll see you next Friday with another tutorial. Until then, have a great time. Bye!